Yo, tapping in real quick. Something light, nothing major. You know what I'm talking about? Chop it up about this uh, Chris Weidman versus uh, Eric Anders fight real quick for a few minutes. One last time. You know what I'm talking about? And, uh, you know, it is what it is, man. I'm on Chris. Chris is uh, in his backyard. You know, this is his hometown. He's a New York boy. You know what I mean? Born and raised. And um, I don't see Eric Anders getting a finish over Chris. I do see I do see it being highly competitive, possibly very closely contested. But with that being said, man, you know, that name's going to hold weight in that state for that decision. You understand what I'm saying to you? Again, all very much so, just my personal opinion. And I get it why uh, individuals aren't necessarily that high on Chris or are just very low on Chris right now. You know what I mean? But what I don't get is why individuals are, uh, you know, high on Eric Anders in any way, shape, form, or fashion. We're talking about an individual who is 8-8-1 eight, eight and one inside the UFC. You know what I'm talking about? And um, in them eight victory, I mean, in them eight losses, he was finished, what, two? Two or three times? He was finished two times and uh, lost via decision six times. In his eight victories, he found a finish three times and he won via decision five times. Then he has the uh, no contest with Darren Stewart. You know what I'm talking about? But um, again, you know, like a no contest with Darren Stewart. This is this is the type of this is the level of opposition we're talking about that he's eight eight and one inside the UFC with. You understand what I'm saying to you? Like he has wins over Jamie Pickett and Kyle Dawkins, man. You know what I mean? Chris got wins over, you know, Gats and Vitor Belfort when he was juiced up. You know what I'm talking about? I mean. Chris has some good fucking wins. Chris has produced a good body of work against a good level of opposition. You understand what I'm saying to you? What Eric Anders has been able to do up against who Eric Anders has been able to do it against does not move me in any way, shape, form, or fashion, man. It does not impress me. You understand what I'm saying to you? He should have been able to do that. He shouldn't have such a horrendous record, 8-8-1, eight, eight and one inside the UFC up against the level of opposition that he's been up against. You understand what I'm saying to you? But the wins, the Jamie Pickett's, the Kyle, I like the individuals that he has wins over inside the UFC. I mean, come on, man. Come on, man. I know everybody down on Chris, you know, for the way things been going for him. And uh, I can dig it. And then the last performance, I can definitely dig it. But uh, I do believe Chris is going to show up and give us for what it's worth at this stage of his, you know, career and his life, a primetime Chris Weidman performance in Madison Square Garden one more again. You know what I'm talking about? He's going to keep it clean, crisp. You know, he's going to be the more technical one on the feet. He's got the three-inch reach. Um, You know, neither one of them are necessarily that fast. They're probably neck and neck as far as uh, power is concerned. And um, I just don't believe Eric Anders is going to be able to implement, implement enough of his, you know, trying to pressure Chris up against the cage and get control time and possibly secure takedowns and get top pressure, top control and all that, you know, that he likes to do. He likes to mix in an all-around body of work. They both do. And honestly, I give the edge to Chris in those exchanges, man. You know, he's proven to be, you know, who he's proven to be in there against who he's proven to be, who he's proven to be against. And Eric, that level of opposition is just different. Just look at the resumes, and I get it. Again, I get it, man. I get it, man. I'm an individual who wishes that Chris was not fighting anymore. You know what I'm telling Mo? I don't like to see people have exits, you know, like Chuck Liddell. You know what I mean? Like Dominic Reyes was having, you know, Chuck Liddell, man, like 
That's why I compare Dominic Reyes to him because we don't know what he's going to look like just because he got a win now, Dominic Reyes. You know what I mean? He got knocked out, knocked out, knocked out. He caught a dub. He might get knocked out again, much like Chuck Liddell. Knocked out, knocked out, knocked out. He caught a dub and got knocked out again. You know what I'm talking about? Like, I don't like to see individuals have those kind of exits. You know what I mean? But with that being said, in Madison Square Garden, 2024, Chris's backyard, I do believe this is a very winnable matchup for him that uh, Eric Anders doesn't necessarily impose any physical threats as far as a finish is concerned. It's going to be highly competitive, possibly, again, very closely contested. And in Madison Square Garden, I'm giving Chris the edge, man, on the cards. And I do believe he's going to edge uh, Eric out any everywhere anyway for the decision. But again, this is all just very much so my personal opinion. Peace and blessings.